What's up guys? This is Mystery School back again with another video. Today's topic is the Mouse Utopia experiment from uh, the like what 1980s? Either way, this video or rather this uh, topic has kind of exploded in popularity across the last few, probably like the last two months. I've heard a lot of people kind of talking about it and talking about it and bringing it up in like red pill, black pill circles. So um, Daniel uh, J. Livers uh, requested this video so I figured I'd give it a shot. Um, I'm not really going to focus that much on the experiment itself because I feel like everybody who's probably on this channel has probably seen that video a million times now. But I am going to try to focus on uh, one key, especially his conclusion of the um, social roles and the um, social breakdown that he talks about at the very of uh, Calhoun's conclusion of the experiment. So uh, let's go. Let's get into this shit. So today's this first slide here is about social roles. So just to start off with a quote from Shakespeare. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They all have their exits, and they all have their interests, their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. A social role is effectively, you know, that quote kind of t t says it all. You know, we all have our role to play, our part to play in the game of the social circle game. So, the part people play is members of a social group. That's what a social role is. So if we take a, like a, real, a really, really simple environment, like, like, a, like a classroom, you have your teacher, you have your funny guy or the class clown, the asshole kid who's constantly laughing and cracking jokes and making the teacher's job really hard. You have the weird kid. A lot of uh, insults probably fall into this category, category here, the, the weird kid, the uh, autism kid who's kind of like odd in class. You have the goth or, e or emo kid. You have the jock. You have the hipster. You know, you have the... Uh, who else, what else is the social role? You have your Chad, your Stacy, you have know, your hot kids, you have your preps. Like, these are all just roles that you either get forced into or you adopt yourself. Okay. Your role is fixed until a new variable shows up. Changes depending on the environment. So, keep in mind that your environment also includes other people as well. So, in theory, adding more people can change how other people behave in the social game. So effectively, like, uh, let's say there's a, a new kid in town, and he's funnier than you, and you, and, you're, and right now you're the class clown. Well, right now you two are now competing to be, competing with each other to be the class clown. You know, it's going to be a kind of a coin flip of, of if, he, if he's a fu a fu funnier than you, people are, are going to consider him the new class clown. But if he's um, not as funny, well, then you get to keep your spot. But the real question becomes, okay, well, if you're, if you're not the class clown anymore, who is? Or rather, what, what do you become? Do you, do, do you become, like, the, the second fiddle, or what? Or, your other option would be to, like, befriend this kid, and you could be, like, co-class clown. But hey, you know, there's always more room for one person per role, but typically it is just one guy, like, always going to be the guy who is, like, re re remembered for, like, one thing. So... When you are either get you either get forced into or take a role on a role, you will be expected to act in a way that is consistent with that role. If you are if you are the class clown, you are expected to be a nuisance to the teacher and make jokes. If you're a jock, you're expected to behave in a way that is quote unquote alpha and cool. You know, and then we have roles are culturally defined. We have the archetype. And we have variants of archetypes. So basically, an archetype is a statement, pattern, a behavior. You know, and basically the variant would be the original pattern from which copies are made. So, like, you could have a variant of, of an archetype. So, you could have, like, the, um, it's kind of like the, uh, a D&D, &D, um, basic classes of, like, a knight, a mage, and a, um, and a sorcerer. Well, like, if you combine a, um, I said, like, knight, mage, and, a and a, and a, um, what's it called? The, uh, rogue, or the, the archer. Effectively, you could, you could take a magic archer. So, you combine social, you could combine social, my god. You can combine magic and archery together and make a magic archer. You can combine, like a, like a, um, you know, a, um, you can combine a mage and a, a knight together to make a paladin. You know, or some sort of, like, white knight type thing. Effectively, it's just a variant of two classes where you can combine things together and make new archetypes. But the archetypes are, are always going to be based off of, like, a very, very simple baseline starting point. So let's keep going. We got examples of modern day archetypes. So we have superheroes. You know, a lot of our modern day mythology is based on superheroes. Truth be told, a lot of prior mythology was probably just stories told through the ages. One example was the Epic of uh, Gilgamesh. Stories about gods like Zeus and Hera, or even stories of Jesus Christ. So some modern day one, you got Spider-Man, you got Batman, you got Thor, you got Iron Man, you got Wonder Woman. You know, these are just basic, these heroes that we see in the movies, we all seen as children. These are our, like our modern day 
our heroes, our modern day our, 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 our archetypes, in the modern day, you know, like you might look at Spider Man and you might want to be as snarky as um, as a Spider Man is, or you might look at Batman and decide you want to be as brooding and you know badass as Batman is, or Iron Man. You might look at Iron Man and be like, I, I want to be as snarky as Iron Man is. Like these are just ideas about how you could behave in society. We think we aren't. We think we aren't influenced by these things, but most of us are. We all had childhood heroes we all looked up to and wished we could emulate. While we might have grown out of it, we still carry the lessons learned from those heroes and carry out the ideas of their fictional actions in our daily lives. So while you might not be able to like you know be as badass as Batman is, you can still take on that brooding nature. You know what? You know, like you can walk around kind of with your head kind of down, looking uh, looking like a badass. Okay, you might be you might not be able to like you know web sling like Spider Man, but you can be a snarky Spider Man, right? Like. This is just an idea of like how you could behave. Now you shouldn't act like these guys in real life, but you could you could add parts of these things to your persona. Then you have celebrities and personalities. You have people like Trump. You know, like Trump has totally changed politics forever. Like the uh, Trumpian nature of politics now is it used to be uh, dignified and you know you couldn't say certain things, and now it's like a free for all. People are talking shit. People are on Twitter. Like. He's totally changed the game of how politics is done, and I think it's, it's actually for the best. People like Jeff Bezos, you know, he's a brilliant, ruthless uh, businessman, you might want to emulate his behavior. AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, like her or hate her, she, is, she has become a personality of politics. I, I don't, I hate her, I hate her fucking guts, but, you know, she, she is influential, to say the least. Bernie Sanders, same idea, he's become a, a huge, um... Um, archetype for the left. The, the left love Bernie Sanders, especially the far left. Elon Musk, he's become a huge archetype for like engineers and nerdy kids who like, I, I want to grow up to be like Elon Musk and make PayPal or make SpaceX or uh, make Tesla. He's become a huge like, he's almost become like the Iron Man of our age. Like people love the stuff he makes. Okay. And now we're going to talk about the experiment. So I'm not going to go, this again, I'm not going to go in depth in the experiment. I'm not going to play any videos because I feel like, like anyone who's seen who's been on this channel long enough, or who's been in the black pill, red pill circles long enough, has probably seen the actual real, the real long, long form video. But I'm just going to cover it a little bit over here in like the Cliff Notes version. So we have the, um, you know, the experiment. Calhoun and his researchers created a series of rat and cutopias, enclosed spaces in which rats were given an unlimited access to food and water, enabling unfettered population growth. So, you know, it's kind of like our modern day human cities. They're akin to human cities. Now, there's certain things, like, you're not, like, restricted in your movement, per se, from a city. Like, you can always leave a city where these rats couldn't. But it's the general idea is there. You have an area where, like, you know, you're close to other people. You're constricted somewhat in movement as long as you stay, stay within the city barriers. Um, you know, you're, there's plenty of food and water. It's all readily available and shelter. As long as you, uh, uh, you can afford it, you can, you can live in a city. And it's the same kind of environment, really. Um, what else? And then the experiment itself went through four, four phases of growth. You have the initial um, uh, growth phase, rather, of Strive, which is um, nestor created and social roles are defined. Effectively, you know, this is just the starting point. So, like, the social roles here, they're being defined. Everyone's trying to figure out where they fit at in the hierarchy and where they fit at in the, um, and what they're going to be in the rat utopia, what they're going to be in the world. You know, it's the same idea of like a, a social sorting. Some rats are some rats are going to be uh, bigger than other rats. Some rats are going to be um, you know, faster than other rats are. Everyone's trying to find their spot in the game. So Nestor created. People are finding food and water, and there's plenty of stuff. There's plenty of food and water because once again, it's unlimited access. So there's plenty of food, water, and shelter. You have the exploit phase, unequal resources dis distribution, even though they were, there was plenty. So, like, it's so odd that this even happened, because, once again, there's unlimited access to food and water, but somehow resources like land, although the resources being distributed are more like the roles. I'm, I'm going to get into that in the next slide, but, like, it seems to me like the problem that they ran into was that there weren't enough, there wasn't enough stuff for the other rats to do. The, the, the rats who were kind of, who were kind of left behind, there wasn't enough, um social social capital left for them to do anything with so it's like these rats were like restricted on like what they were able to do within the rat, po rat population they couldn't find a social role within the rat population once once again i'll cover that in the, in the very next slide um equilibrium and die i'm going to cover in the next slide so let's just, let's just get, get to that shit okay 
this is the real meat of the meat, meat of the video here. You have implications and, and conclusions. So the conclusion that that Calhoun comes to is that he has this idea of behavioral sync, which is basically the collapse in behavior which can result from overcrowding. Just to read straight from straight from Wikipedia here. <clears throat> Many of the female rats were unable to carry pregnancy to full term or survive delivery of their, of their litters if they did. An even greater number, after successfully giving birth, fell short of their maternal functions. Among the males, the behavior disturbances ranged from sexual deviation to cannibalism and from frenetic overactivity to pathological withdrawal from which individuals would emerge to eat, drink, and move about only when other members of, of the community were asleep. The social organization of animals showed equal disruption. Um, the common source of these disturbances became more dramatically apparent in populations of the first series of three experiments, um, in which we observed the development of what we call behavioral sync. The, the animals would crowd together in the greatest number in one of the four in interconnecting pens in which the colony was maintained. As many as 60 of the 80 rats in which experimental populations would, assemb would assemble in one pen during periods of feeding. Individual rats would rarely eat except in the company of other rats, and as a result, extreme population densities developed and then the pen ad adopted for eating leaving the other pens sparse with sparse populations. This sounds just like America. If you, like, just take out the rat shit and the food shit, and, like, this part right here, as a result of extreme population densities, like, developed in the pen, adopted for eating, leaving the other areas areas with sparse populations. This is the modern-day city and the uh, flyover states. The coastal cities are, like, full of people, and the, and the flyover states are full of, like, no people at all. Like, this is this just modern-day America, you know, you, you can draw parallels between this experiment and human activity very, very easily. Once again, it's not one-to-one, -one, but it's close enough. In the experiments in which the behavioral sync developed, infant mortality ran as high as 96% among the most disoriented groups in the population. Okay, and then we get to this equilibrium uh, phase. Oh, wait, let's go with the be uh, beautiful ones first. This, the beautiful ones. This is a topic that people will seem to like to talk about a lot. And you, you see, see it a lot on a lot of forums, you'll see it a lot on a lot of like YouTube videos, but either way. Basically, these beautiful ones were the perfect examples of the species, i.e. the Chads and the Stacys, but extremely stupid. Effectively, these rats here are the, are the byproducts of Chad and Stacy. These rats here were so beautiful that, like, only... Like, obviously, gen, gen, genetically, a Chad rat and a Stacy rat would make a, more and more a beautiful rat on some level. Not necessarily true, but it should ring true. So yeah, once again, these are perfect examples of the species. So like, they, they, they look very inquisitive. They they look very beautiful. They look very like smart and all that stuff like that. But they're extremely stupid. And you'll find that a lot, like the blonde bimbo in, in real life, like the the the, the dumb fuck um, jock kid who looks really handsome, but he's just fucking dumb with a box of bricks. Like, I'm not quite sure if this is due to the the social role thing or if this is due to the fact that like. Because they're so beautiful, they got treated so well. I'm talking talking more about people right now than I am about rats. But like, because they were treated so well their whole life, they never they never really learned anything. And thus, because they never learned anything, they could not handle unexpected situations. So like, the the reason why we have intelligence, for for the most part, is that it allows us to. We're effectively our minds are like pattern pattern of recognizing machines. And our, and our ability to recognize a pattern and react to it is what keeps us alive. If you can't do that, then, like, you're effectively, like, retarded. <laughs> so, like, when we talk about an unexpected situation, like, you should have an idea about how to handle, even if something is unexpected, you can draw parallels to, an, to an, a, another situation in which you can react to it. So, like... While the situation might might not be one to one, your pattern recognition machines should be like, wait a second, this is akin to this. I should do X, Y, and Z. If you can't do that, then like I said, you're functionally retarded. So we have the equilibrium phase. You know, newer generations of young are inhibited since most social space was socially defined. So once again, like let's say you have you have twenty rats, and all twenty rats have a role in society. And there's an extra, and then there's an extra ten rats laying around. What do you do with these ten rats? Well, what used to happen? This is kind of the implications of the experiment. Is that what used to happen was they they would die, like they would die in a war or some sort of famine would happen, and then they would starve to death or they would get sick and die. Like there there used to be natural a mechanism for getting rid of like the unwanted males in society, the or really the unwanted people in society. But 
we've gotten so good at keep, keep, keeping people alive and feeding people and our technology has gotten so good that we literally like those uh, mechanisms no longer work like the only one that we still have left is war and even then our wars aren't aren't fought like on a huge battlefield somewhere they're fought quite literally like you know like it's like small bands of people fighting now instead of like these these like big huge battlefields where like people were dying in trench, trench warfare so like we've lost almost all of our ways to like fix this problem on some level it would take like a quite literally a, a catastrophe to solve this problem like a, a natural disaster of like epic 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 proportions like a like a like a san andreas fault explosion or a uh a, a, a yellowstone national park you know eruption to like solve this problem so to solve the problem of excess males and really excess people in general and what happened effectively with these with these ex, these extra rats who couldn't find a place in society was that violence and excess males strive for acceptance. And when they were really they got violent, and then of, of the excess males they became strive for acceptance. And when they couldn't find acceptance, they, they got rejected, and, they, and then they withdrew from, from society. So like they became your incels, they became your um your neats, they became your um you know they became just kind of like the excess of society, the, the bastards of, of of the machine, the unwanted people who society couldn't figure out what to do with and even then certain mice or rats became targets of repeated abuse like if you look go back to a high school environment these, these were the kids who got beat up like every single day in, in high school or college or not college but high school in uh, uh middle school like these were like your your nerd kid or your weird kid who got beat up every day for just being himself because like he's an easy target and he makes everyone else feel good so fuck it take him out so the the implications are what no one wants to talk about but it's somewhat like this is very much true all of our uh, mechanisms to solve this problem are gone naturally so you're gonna, you're gonna need some sort of either natural like extremely extreme natural phenomenon to fix this problem or some external external source is gonna have to fix the problem for us one of the two or we fix it via some sort of like i don't know like <laughs> uh, euthanasia which will be yeah that'd be kind of rough and then the conclusion of the experiment is that the society collapsed. So you have the die phase. So the die phase, yeah, the, the whole damn experiment just fell apart and died. It, it, all the rats died and no more rat utopia. Oh man, this is some dark shit. All right, guys. So this is kind of a good example. I've, sh I've shown this um, picture before in the, um, inso not inso video, but the neat video. But this is kind of what we're talking about here. We have your Chad hoarding all the females. And we have our incel rat here. He's like, man, I, I want to get in there, but like, there's this wall of like social like, social roles here that have already been defined because Chad Chad has them all. And he's like, well, I'm not giving anything up. I'm not giving any of this up because fuck you. So he's like, he's left out of the game, but he's still he's still trying to play it, but he's left he left out of the game because he can't find a role to fulfill. Okay, so the sources were Rat Utopia video, Wikipedia, the good old brain. This has been Mystery School. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Never forget, guys, that wisdom is gold. If you have a topic to, uh, for another video, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. And thanks for watching. See you next time.